Okay, so people will be asking like Steam, what, what's going on like basically and Steam decided to just show us the Steam machine that it's been alright, we know what it looked like now, we know how powerful it is but we do not know when it's going to be released and for how much so instead of waiting to Valve to do the final decision of hey you got it, I built my own Steam machine all in here, it run the Steam OS it's a beast. Hello everyone, I'm Chekotek and this is what Valve Next Steam Machine could realistically feel like before it even hit the store shelf. It's the same for the living room. You turn it on, you grab your controller and you boot straight into Steam. No keyboard, no mouse, no Windows pop-up running in the background. Just straight away. And in many ways, it's like, well, having a Steam Deck experience but just bigger and more powerful i'm always plugged in as well now let me start with all the internal components because at the heart of this build is an amd ryzen 5 7600 a 6 core 12 thread sem4 desktop cpu valve coming steam machine use a semi custom sem4 6 core cpu with rdna3 graphics meaning that the architecture on the core accounts are essentially the same as I got here right now. And this makes my system a realistic preview of what the official hardware is honestly gonna be delivering. Just with the slightly higher sustainable clocks and a bit more noise due to the full desktop power. All components are mounted on a MSI MPG B850i ITX motherboard offering modern connectivity, Wi-Fi 7, USB-Cs, and a great compact form factor as well. And the graphics, well, at DNA 3, this is all handled by the Asus Dual RX 7600 with 8GB GDDR6 video memory. Uh, so the dedicated GPU is comfortable and it targets 1080p at ultra and 4040p high game. On top of that, I did add 16GB of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 5200 memory and a 1TB Kingston KC3000 PCI4. This board that offer PCI5, but I went with a PCI4.0. So boot times are still fast, games load immediately, and the overall experience feels console-like, just a little bit quicker. But Sandro, how does it actually perform? Well, in the real world, the system performs like exactly a modern desktop PC with a few caveats tied to Linux and Proto rather than the raw power itself. So, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider provide me a solid baseline because at 1440p very high in settings, both titles run around 40 to 50 frames with occasional status doing a CPU like heavy scene cuts and stuff. So dropping the settings too high improved the experience dramatically. Frame range jump to around 77 frames and most of the status completely disappeared, pointing that the CPU overhead and the Proton was the problem rather than the GPU limitation. And now some games that I really wanted to try, like Spider-Man 2, perform exceptionally well. On high settings, it's consistently exceeding 100 frames. Even in the dense city, just flying around New York was brilliant. It looks fantastic. And now Cyberpunk 2077, um, Hogwarts Legacy show where this system really shines with FSR 3 and Frey Generation. This system and Cyberpunk stay above 100 frames all the time. Even doing the busy street, the seat combos, driving around, driving away the police, like doing fights and stuff. And Hogwarts Legacy, more of the same. 60 to 70 frames delivering that smooth, controller friendly experience that we all seen from a console and several other titles run completely flawless stride the cat game that was brilliant fart simulator and macy and horizon forbidden west all deliver stable frame pacing no noticeable shattered and excessive control support ideal for like living room setup games but with that said everything is not ideal Everything doesn't work. Titles such as Skate, Red Dead Redemption 2, Forza Horizon 5, Alan Wake 2, and Ghost of Tsushima fail to launch due to incompatibility with Red X, with Proton, 
with and support it anti cheat systems, DRMs, you name it. Just, oh, this is what Linux gaming is all about. And don't get me wrong, because Valve already has shown what the Steam machine, not mine one, what they got, and they have shown it to the press back in mid-2025 with a 2026 window launch that can be beginning, middle, end. While pricings remain unconfirmed, expectations since around seven to 800 pounds, this, the whole thing cost me around 875 pounds. But what makes this especially relevant is that Valve's these machines share the same architecture and core counts as mine. Same four, six core CPU, RDNA 3 GPU. In other words, the performance that you are seeing here is realistically um, what the official hardware is going to be delivering. Only that this system trace efficiency and silence for slightly higher sustainable clocks. Because all this hardware is sitting inside this case. This is the CPS i100 mesh case, a 7.5 liter case that firmly is in the constant territory. Like this is a PlayStation 4. Um, it got more ground on this axle. Of course, this is way thinner. But building inside this thing was a completely challenge. I never had so much difficulty in my life. GPU barely fit. Routing all the power cables was like solving a 3D puzzle in a well. And Valve Steam Machine is actually smaller than this. It's going to be around 3.8 liters. But that extra space that well, we got here, allow me for a full desktop GPU, proper airflow, and a standard SFS power supply. So if I want to replace all this down the line, easy. 5080, if it fits, I can put in there. 4060, 5060, whatever card I can put. And the other limitation that I had was the cooler itself, because this is the original cooler that I was going to be using. This is the CPS RC600. It would not fit, was too tall, so not to a NHL9A AMD when into the build. Now, another question here. Does it get hot? And the answer is yes. After a good hour, hour and a half of constant gaming in the living room, the Ryzen 5 did reach 96 degrees. Clock speeds did dip from 5.1 to 4.8 gigahertz, indicating like it was a thermal throttle. And this is between AMD Zen 4 thermal limiters, don't take me wrong but it shows that the system operating at the edge of the cooling envelope. The GPU actually remains quite cool. It got its own chamber on one side and you got two fans. So it was no problem, 70 degrees, VRN was saying 80 degrees and the GPU fans was spinning all the way up to nearly 3000 RPM. We got power supply fan, CPU fan and the GPU fan. So the GPU side did expel loads of air, the, all the hot air, is coming out actually feels quite cold to be honest. But CPU side, that tiny fan is not doing a lot. I wish I was able to put a big one. And you can tell this side of the chamber is quite warm. And for sound, measuring at 30 centimeters away, it picks around 54 decibels. So it's louder than a console, but reasonably okay for the performance that you're getting from the density. And this, once you got it next to the TV, with the, all the sound coming from the TV speakers, you're barely gonna hear it, or you're not gonna even realize that it's there once you are into the game. But I'm quite hyped because this build highlights just how far Linux gaming has come. Over the past seven years, has transformed the landscape. As I said, this is a MSI running SteamOS, Linux system playing games. Proton is incredibly stable, supporting thousands of games with performance of the on par with native Windows game, and sometimes even slightly better thanks to Windows lawyer backgrounds overheads. And at the same time, the number of fully native Linux games, it continuing to grow. And we've got titles like Dota 2, CSGO 2, Hollow Knight, and countless other indie games out there that run without any extra compatibility layer. And combine that with Proton, this means that the vast majority of the Sting library is now playable on Linux. Something that when I started playing games about 15 years ago, that was something unthinkable. And one of Linux's biggest advantages was that control and freedom. I like with Windows, you don't need a whole line account just to use your own system that, that you own. There's no forced telemetry, no 
requiring latency checks and no constant data being sent back to the mothership. Your system is yours. You control every corner of them. And I generally believe that Linux is becoming the next major gaming OS for the next five to 10 years. Give it that window and honestly, it will happen. The shift will not happen today to tomorrow, but trajectory is clear. Just as creators, photographers, and other professionals have moved from Windows PCs to Macs and Apple PCs for their stability, their efficiency, and their reliability, Games will follow that same path. Just hear me out. Come back to this video in three years. Um, just let me know in the comment section. But this is the machine built. It's not just to demonstrate how compact you can make a, a PC. It's to actually prove Linux-powered gaming is the future. It is what it is, believe it or not. But that's all for me, guys. Just don't forget to show some love in this video. Comment, like, subscribe, and I truly appreciate all your support. And remember, guys, I'm Chekotek, and I will see you on the next video. Link for all the components are also down below, but have a great one. See you in the next one. Adios.